Brad, and uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about the book that I use and our bread machine. Uh, I love this book. It's called The Great Bread Machine Baking Book by Marlene Brown, and it has every recipe in here that you really want, could ever want to make. Uh, you know, white bread, whole wheat bread, rye bread, sweet breads, whatever. So, um, the next thing I'll talk about is our bread machine. This machine will do a number of different functions, and I can't pronounce it. It's Z-O-J-I-R-U-S-H-I, -S -S but it's, it's a pretty good one. I think it was about $150. You can get them at all different price ranges, but um, this is also my second machine. The first machine lasted about 12 years, so I've been baking bread with bread machines for about 15 years, and I started doing it because I have a lot of food allergies and I'm allergic to soy. So if you notice in breads that you get at the supermarket, uh, there's usually soy flour, soybean oil, things like that. I can't have that. So I decided one day that I would try to start making my bread. And uh, I've got all the ingredients measured out here to make it you know, time effective. But I'll, I want to talk about the flour. I use King Arthur flour. It's unbleached bread flour. Make sure you use bread flour. It has something different in it than all-purpose, like the gluten content is different or something. Um, it's a good company. They're employee-owned. It's all 100% wheat grown in the United States, and I really like it. So um, the first thing you do is you start with your liquid ingredients, okay? Ours is a cup and a half of milk, couple, half a cup of water, tablespoon and a half of butter. Cut it up because um, it helps to, uh, you know, blend in there a little bit easier. This bread machine, however, it will rest for 20 minutes before it starts its cycle. What that does is it brings everything to the same temperature so that when the bread starts to knead, you know, your butter is all melted and like that. Now we have two and a half tablespoons of sugar. Um, this is a sweeter bread than what you could normally make, like a French bread really has no sugar in it. Um, this is just bread, uh, a recipe that I like. So you put the sugar in. Tablespoon and a half of salt. Next we put our dry ingredients. <clears throat> uh, th it's three and a third cups of the flour. So you always start with your, your liquid first and you end with your dry ingredients. The one notation about the butter I forgot to tell you was just use a regular salted sweet cream butter and it has uh, measurements on the side here so you can tell you what is a tablespoon and a half. And the salt is Morton's regular iodized salt. You could use regular salt if you want without it. Um, Fleischmann's yeast. This is a bread machine yeast. It, I don't know what the difference is but this is what I've been using for years. And I always buy the big jar because I make bread once or twice a week. And uh, this recipe is two teaspoons of yeast. <clears throat> now with the yeast you want to make sure that you don't um, get it wet in the in the top. So you always put that as your last ingredient. Okay, now we close the lid. Uh, I also never bake my bread in the machine. I just don't like the way it comes out. So I like it free-formed, so when I just use the dough setting on here, and I bring it out, and I put it on a tray, and you'll see that on the next step. So we're going to um, select our mode to dough. It's an hour and 45 minutes. You press start, and we're good to go. Now, at a, after about 25 minutes or 30 minutes, I just come and check it and make sure that it's kneading and it's doing it's the right consistency. Because sometimes you'll notice on a humid day, you might use less water. On a, on a very dry day, you might need a little more, uh, a little more uh, water. And so this way, this way you'll look at it and you'll see if it's the, the dough is coming together right. <clears throat> if it's a little too moist, you just sprinkle in some flour. If it's a little too dry, this is your opportunity to sprinkle in a little bit of water. And uh, you, you, know, you want to monitor that and just make sure that it's it's coming together nicely. Okay, we're going to see in about an hour and 45 minutes. We'll get our bread out. Okay, it's been an hour and 45 minutes. Want to come over and take a look at our bread? Here we are. And that's what it looks like. It's fully risen. Okay, we're going to just take it out of the thing. 
Now what we've got here is a, just a you know a cookie sheet. <clears throat> Put some flour in your hands. Because you're gonna have to take it out here. You put a little flour on your baking sheet. Just pull the bread out. And there it is. So mush it around a little bit. This does a couple of things. It gets any like remaining air bubbles that are in there out. And you can form it into any shape that you want. We're going to make a kind of a long shape because we're going to do a couple of things with this loaf of bread. We're going to have it for our lasagna dinner. And we're going to make some bruschetta later, and, which is a nice appetizer. Or it can be a meal. It's going to be our meal. And that, that is it. Now the thing is you want to do is you want to cover it <clears throat> with an all cotton cloth, make sure it has no nap on it. And you're going to let this set in a warm area with no draft. So that could be, you know, the top of the wood burning stove if you have one, which is what we do, um, in a sunny window, just as long as it's a good warm place. We're going to let that sit for about 35 minutes and then we're going to bake it and that's going to be our bread. Okay, we'll see you in a little while. Okay, it's been about 35 minutes. Um, Here's our bread. It's been sitting on the wood stove for about 35 minutes, and uh, it's risen nicely. It's about doubled in size. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you could brush it with milk, melted butter, or oil. That would give the top a really, really brown, crispy, crispy top. Uh, we're not going to do that tonight. We're just going to pop it in the oven. Heat your oven at 350 degrees, and put it in. ready in about 38 minutes so we'll see you when that bread comes out. Hi, so it's been about 35, 38 minutes and uh, it should be ready so let's have a look. Oh look at that, gorgeous. Now the way to tell if your bread is cooked is you tap it. Can you hear that? You, it sounds hollow and that's what you want it to sound like. That means the bread is done. So there we are. We have this beautiful loaf of bread. And uh, you can say that we're going to make some bruschetta tonight. We'll do that in a few minutes. Um, but uh, you could have that with, you know, lasagna dinner. You could make sandwiches, whatever you want. Now, you, all this excess flour that's on there, you take your little pastry brush and you just brush it off. So you don't, you don't really want to eat that raw flour. Not bad. You just get all that off of there. Now you're going to want this bread to cool until you uh, for cutting. You don't want to cut bread when it's hot because it'll get all mushy on you. But what we're going to do is we're going to take it off this tray. Usually you should let it sit about five minutes, ten minutes, take it off the tray. But we're going to see if we can do it now. Uh, here, crunchy, how nice that is. Put your extra flour underneath so it doesn't really stick. We're going to transfer it to a cooling rack and we're going to let it cool. But uh, you can continue to just you know brush it off and get all that flour off. Do it on the bottom too when it's when it's cool. It's really hot right now, so you can't handle it. So we have tough stuff here. Who wants to sample the bread? But I don't think we'll let that happen. And there you go. So now we've got bread for dinner. And in a few minutes, uh, Cut into it and we'll make some bruschetta. And that's it.